birds, baguettes, black holes, and bosons. And how are they connected to saboteurs from the future? My name's Kevin Leeson. Would you like some spaghettification with meatballs? I'm Joe Fulgham. White holes. White holes. White holes? I'm Torn Atkinson. Tonight on Caustic Soda, the podcast. That image that you told me you saw on the monitor, from what you described, that sounds exactly like a black hole, a tear in we space. We know what a black hole is, Ted. We're, I don't know what a black hole is. A black hole is a collapsed dead star that has so much gravity it acts like a huge vacuum cleaner sucking everything into it. Uh, light, interstellar dust, time. Time. Well, it's possible, but not plausible. <laughs> it's more than probable. It's rudimentary astrophysics. We just haven't been able to fly into one and prove it. Caustic Soda, not a real science podcast. Here we are. All right. Talking about black holes today. Uh, I'm Torn, here with Kevin and Joe. Hey. Hey, hey. And actually, that uh, was Joe and Kevin, actually. Yeah, it was. Actually, I have a follow-up. Uh, <laughs> remember when we talked one on the episode Shark Attacks? Remember way back, way back to episode number one. Episode number <laughs> oh, one. And we talked about the guy who was immortalized in the painting after being attacked by right. a shark. Who the went Lord, the Lord Mayor of London. Lord Mayor of the London. The Lord Mayor of London who had one foot. One, one I have leg. a follow-up. The Right Honorable Lord Mayor of London is the legal title for the mayor of and head of the City of London Corporation. So he, he's called the Lord Mayor, but he's really just a mayor. There's also a mayor. There's a Lord Mayor of London and a regular Mayor of London. So what's the, what's well, the, difference, what's the difference between the two? The Lord Mayor's main role is, as it has been for centuries, <laughs> <laughs> to represent, support, and promote the businesses and the people of the City of London. The Lord Mayor is elected each year at Michaelmas. Oh, every year? Oh, so, so but he represents like the PR House guy. of Lords. Mm, is that what you're saying? I don't think no. so. I think he's just a PR oh. guy. You know, the, he's the so figurehead. He, so he goes on TV, he waits for it to be invented. London. The Lord Mayor of London is an officer only in the city of London, while the Mayor of London is the Mayor of Greater London, and as such governs a larger area, a much larger area. It's very complicated. It sounds yeah. like Within it. the city of London, the Lord Mayor has precedence over other individuals and has various special powers. <laughs> <laughs> rights and privileges. <laughs> Special powers. So there's you that. have entered. A, you have entered London proper. This is my domain. You know, I rule here. I. You know what his uh, his number one special power is? Surviving shark attacks. Surviving shark Apparently, attacks. Yeah, as right. an orphan. Surviving shark attacks as an orphan. So what is this a black hole? Myself. Oh, black holes. Well, I did actually did some research. Holy smokes. Uh, I'm not going to be mm. the least knowledgeable person at the table today. That's what my are you talking aim. about? That's my job, being that, knowledgeable. <laughs> well, I think we, uh, Joe, I think you and I duke it out every week. Uh, Torn seems to be coming most prepared week in and week out. But, so I well, I hooked up my printer this week after the move, so I was able to print out some stuff. Perfect. So I'll be doing a lot of just reading straight off paper for this oh, episode. Oh, do we have the, uh, um, yeah. do, do we have a reference photo? You, you oh, yes, in fact. Who's our pin-up? Uh, it's the, the pin up Lego time? Stephen Hawking. Oh, <laughs> As snap. seen on the internet. Oh, that is awesome. That you guys is... haven't seen this before? No. Oh, my God. I, are we going to be putting all of these oh, yes. on the website? Oh, yeah. You, you uh, say that as if it hasn't, happened to, hasn't already happened three the, times. The, oh. first, the first three episodes are already up. The Do you not visit our website? Caustic Soda. I haven't been Caustic Soda Podcast. Dot com. Yeah, we didn't even mention that last episode. I, uh, and we had an incorrect email in our first two episodes. Because what's our actual email? Uh, info at CausticSodaPodcast.com. Uh, normally, at the top of the episode, I point out the origin of the word and uh, what the name of the phobia is, but I couldn't find... Well, black and whole is the name, <laughs> is the origin Seems of the word. pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, I don't really think there's a phobia listed in the list of phobias. Much like shark holes. attacks, I think fearing a black hole is just common sense. Yeah, exactly. I'm fearing a large, empty space. I don't perhaps. know, though, because there's a lot of... Uh, that, that's, that's not what a black hole is, sir. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of unwarranted fear about the Large Hadron Collider black hole. That's true. So. That is true. Anyway, we'll get to that in the news section. R- Ridiculophobia? <laughs> 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 Uh, does anybody know when exactly? When did they first postulate black holes? When did they first postulate black holes? Oh, anybody got a year. Uh, my actual original guess would have been uh, Einstein because wasn't it? Isn't it relativistic that ha- something about I'm just relativity? Gonna say, I'm just going to say the 40s. Wait, so 1915 was when uh, Einstein first started talking about it. But right. uh, the first positing of the existence of black holes. Actually dates back to 1783. What? That's impossible. 1783. (laughs) The idea of a body so massive that even light could not escape was first put forward by geologist John Mitchell in a letter written to Henry Cavendish in 1783 to the Royal Society. And I quote, If the semi-diameter of a sphere of the same density as the sun were to exceed 
were to exceed that of the sun in the proportion of 500 to 1, a body falling from an infinite height towards it would have acquired its surface greater velocity than that of light, and consequently supposing light to be attracted by the same force in proportion to its inertia with other bodies, all light emitted from such a body would be made to return towards it by its own proper gravity. So he, he did the, the, the gravity math and yes. said, gravity according math. to this, it pulls yeah. down stronger than the, than the speed of light. And in fact, in 1796, a right. mathematician, Pierre-Simon Laplace, oh, I hate that guy. promoted the same idea in both the first and second editions of his book, Exposition du Système du Monde. Well, we'll have to get copies of that. And uh, it, it was removed from later editions. Oh. It, was, uh, it only exists in the first and second edition. Oh, well, that's going to be hard to find then. Scratch yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, so there you go, 1783. Oh. I was uh, I was pretty surprised myself when I found that one out. The densest, most massive singular objects in the universe formed in one of three main processes. Name those processes. Go. Collapsing. Think stars start to collapse. Supernova collapsing. Number one. Right. When two large stars. Neutron stars. Neutron stars. Yeah. Locked in a binary relationship, spiral together and merge. Right. Oh, that's what, that was the one. I, that's the other one I was going to go with. Yeah, yeah. And then I number. Was gonna, I was going to when worlds collide. Is what I was going to say. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then when number three, uh, postulated by our own Lego Stephen Hawking, that trillions of uh, black holes were formed in the Big Bang. Right. Not accepted <clears throat> by all scientists. Wow. So there's a controversy. Yeah, trillions. Tri- so some of which still exist today. I think there's yeah, a lot of black hole controversy. I think that that when in reading up on this, I think that's what I found to be the most interesting thing is there, pretty much. Every single theory about black holes seemed to come with controversy. It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a riddle, it's, nothingness. It's really the edge of, of our knowledge. Crushed in nothingness. Would you say it's the event horizon of it's our knowledge? It's kind of the event horizon. Well, I think that uh, it's pretty close or to Or would that. you say it's the accretion disk of our <laughs> it's knowledge? Probably the accretion wow. disk. We are throwing around some black hole terminology. So why don't we talk there. about what those are, actually? Torin, what's, what's an event horizon? Uh, an event horizon? Oh, my notes. Uh, that you don't know no, 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 no. That's where, that's basically where, at the point at which you cannot escape a black right. It's the point of no return. The yeah. point at which the pull of gravity uh, would uh, exceed that of, uh, would, would even pull in light. So even light, the fastest thing in the universe, would not be able to escape its pull, yes. But aren't there three kinds of black holes, Kevin? Oh, the, uh, I think there might be. Three you had only gold. two on your list. I only but had I three trumped you. Uh, yeah, Torn uh, already showed me up once today, because... Uh, I'd read up about the the Schwarzschild, Schwarzschild, the Schwarzschild black hole, which is a non-rotating <laughs> black hole. That's right. And I knew about uh, that and one. I found I found about the Kerr black hole. No, 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 wait, no. Let's talk a little bit more about the Schwarzschild. Ah, uh, Schwarzschild. A singularity, one event horizon. Mm-hmm. This is what I've heard about the the Schwarzschild. Yep. Okay, these are, you're talking about these are the properties of the yeah, Schwarzschild. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. As opposed okay. to the as opposed to the. Okay, here's the second Ooh, one. You're gonna come up with a tough one here. I'm Reisner Nordstrom. That's another kind of black hole. One singularity. How many event horizons? Two. Correct. Oh, that That's was a correct, sir. Full on guess because this Woo-hoo. was the black hole that I had not heard of. And then the Kerr or Kerr. Kerr. The Kerr hole, which is a <laughs> rotating black hole. <laughs> I got kicked in the Kerr hole. Uh, <laughs> Kerr hole is my nickname for one of my ex girlfriends. It's got an ergosphere. An ergosphere. But yeah, it, so now, hold on. The Kerr hole, it's, it's one of these controversial holes, right? Because. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Again, we, ex, this is, my ex-girlfriend. We are going to be chuckling about controversial holes all day it's, long. Yeah. And, but it's a controversial hole because, of course, some have theorized that the Kerr hole is the time-traveling hole. <laughs> is the time-traveling hole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good God. This whole podcast is just going to devolve into infantile <laughs> chuckling, isn't it? It has. Yeah, it has already. Hole is a funny word. Yeah. So uh, is accretion disk, but... Uh, right. But it's the one that uh, some have theorized that this is what one of the, this black hole would make time travel possible. Uh, I don't know the the mechanics of that, but I just read, nobody read, knows. Read that that was the controversy. It's controversial. Yeah, that some believe it to be true and some many do not. I don't. That, you don't believe time travel because when you just get torn up going through the black hole. Well, but here's that the hypothetical journey through a black hole. Hypothetical journey through a black hole. Well, uh, uh, do you want to walk us through it, Dorian? See episode Black Hole of Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> oh. Where they come out with their underpants on the outside of their uniforms. Ah. That's right. Inside. Oh, well, how about the their insides that's, that's on the, the outside of, the of their black. bodies? That didn't happen? Uh, allow me to read something off of this piece of paper, if you would. Okay. As you approach the black hole, your watch would begin to run slower than the watch of your colleagues on the spaceship. So... In this, this situation, again, a theoretical spaceship and in a theoretical si- yeah. black in the hole situation and a theoretical you're, watch. You're, you perhaps you were tethered to the spaceship on a spacewalk and broke. You were studying a black hole, and you're now you're getting sucked in. You hit your vent horizon, if you will. Your comrades notice that you begin to take on a reddish color. 
this is due to the warping of space in the vicinity of the hole, then just before you enter the hole, which is to say pass through the outer event horizon, your friends would see you apparently frozen there just outside the event horizon, and to them, your watch would have stopped if they could observe it. This is with me? My mind. You with me? Yeah, okay. They would never see you enter the hole because at that distance from the singularity, an object must travel at the speed of light to maintain its distance. Thus, your dim red image would stay frozen in their eyes now, for as long as the hole exists. Now, for one second, I just want to point out we haven't yet to- talked about what a singularity is. That's the, that's the eye of the storm, so to speak, that's right? The that's core. the core. The core of a black hole is called a singularity. If yeah. I stay singularity for much longer, my mom's going to think I'm gay. Boom. However, from your vantage point, as you enter the black hole, nothing has changed. As you, as you look out of the hole, the universe still looks relatively normal. However, you are drawn towards the singularity and cannot escape its grasp. At this point, modern physics does not know what would happen. The most likely outcome is that you are compacted in a, into a minuscule size upon the singularity with your underwear on the outside of your body. <laughs> Actually, a uh, very interesting uh, thing happens on your trip towards that singularity. Do, do, you, do you know what it is? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Is it no. spaghettification? It's, it's called spaghettification, but yeah. do you know what spaghettification is? Uh, it has something to do with the spaghetti monster? String I'm theory? Gonna, I'm going gonna, gonna to get, get the whole, like, uh, that uh, cartoon-esque pulled through a keyhole, uh, and so you're turned into a spaghetti-thin strand of humanity. Uh, sort of like of that. Human okay. goo. Gravity works on what we call the inverse square law, which means uh, if you are ten Didn't times... Did we hear about that last episode? Uh, inverse square law works with radiation as well in our last oh. episode. That's if right. you missed that, There's oh, lots we, had a, of we had a special guest, Dr. I, Rob came I in. did miss that. I kept thinking about mutation. I couldn't get around it. Carry on. Uh, anyway, so the inverse square law works this way. Uh, if you are, say, uh, ten times further away from something that works by the inverse square law, you have one one-hundredth of the effect. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, what this means is that as you get closer, the power becomes greater and greater and greater. What if I'm halfway closer? You. Then you would have uh, four times the effect. Okay. Okay. Right. right? So if you're twice <coughs> as far away, it's one quarter because that's okay. the square. You you, you oh, one over the square of the, of the type. I guess right? I so should two, expect two squared math. is four, ten squared is a hundred. That kind of thing. I guess I should. Have, I guess well, a very interesting thing math. happens when you get close to the black hole that works on this inverse square law. Your feet, if they are what is going down further... It's like a water slide, so yes. Right. Or Let's black holes like a water slide. We know that to be true. Your feet are experiencing such a massively different and greater amount of the gravity pulling than the top of you that they would be pulled thousands of times faster than the top of your head. Right. And as you go... So if you go from the top of your head down to your feet, the pull of gravity is far, far greater way down. And so you get pulled and stretched because your feet get pulled... Right. Straight down. So right. you do, in fact, right. become a super long string of humans. Oh, I was almost right. Uh, of course, this would, I'm sure well before that you actually see this happen, but you would be dead because you were just being Unless you were Mr. Asunder. Fantastic from the Fantastic uh, Mr. Fantastic or, could or survive. Plastic or Man, Plastic Or possibly Man. Elongated Man. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. uh, or possibly uh, Rubber Duck from Captain Carrot and Amazing Zoo Crew. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a lot of comic references in a very short amount of time. So, White Holes. All right, so that's uh, when you get spit out the other side of a black hole, right? Mm-hmm. That uh, no, they're the, they're theorized, aren't they? Like yes, they're, they're, no one's actually seen a white have hole. Have we seen one? Yeah. Uh, a flaw in this theory, as many scientists have noted, is that the matter ejected from the white hole would accumulate in the vicinity of the hole and then collapse upon itself, forming the black hole. Mm. A white hole creates a black hole. But I like white holes. And I mean that purely in a scientific <laughs> so, sense. Oh, I was going to accuse you of being racist. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's, uh, all uh, all holes are equal in my eyes. I, yeah, because you know the 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 idea in science fiction is always to take something that's on the cusp, right? You don't. This is why we like tungsten more than lead. Yes, absolutely, of course. This is because it's more sciencey. It's less people know about it. So everyone's heard of black holes. So if you making up a superhero, you want to say he's getting his powers from the white hole. Yeah. Absolutely. Or Don't he, you? Or, or he, or he is the white hole. Or his powers the come from all from the stuff. White hole. The black yeah, hole that's his knows. origin. No one knows where because he came from or what his intentions are. Because it's even more theoretical about than a black hole. Right. He could be like, uh, you know. And don't even get me started about green holes or gray <laughs> holes. <laughs> gray holes. I'm a fan of pink holes. Pink holes. Fair enough. Fair enough. We're all pink on the inside. What is the closest black hole to Earth? Anyone know? Uh, and how? That would be Surrey, British Columbia. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Bonus question. Uh, how far away is it? Not Surrey, but the black hole. I'm going to go with uh, one million light years. Mm, too much. Yeah, I'm oh. going to. I'm going to say the closest black hole. So I'm going to say 500 light years. 
Oh, oh too man. close. Too close? Okay. 6,000 light years is uh, Cygnus X1. Oh, Cygnus. Good old Cygnus. Yep. Two stars locked in a gravitational embrace. One star is a blue supergiant, uh, about 30 times as massive as the sun, and the other star is 5 to 10 times the mass of the sun, extremely small. The object must be the collapsed core of a star. The black oh. hole, the corpse of a star that once resembled the supergiant. I like the way you make things sound so dramatic, in spite of how sciencey. Perhaps the content I is. like to me. I no, maintain that wasn't, wasn't science there, is dramatic. Stephen Hawking had a bet about Cygnus X one. Did he? Yeah, he uh, he had a scientific wager between uh, did he have to did himself and Kip Thorne. Kip, who's Kip Thorne? Kip Thorne's another physicist. Okay. And Hawking was betting that it was not a black hole. Duh. Do you know that Kip Thorne is a physicist, or are you just surmising because who else would wager with uh, <laughs> Stephen Hawking? Who would about dare to bet to Stephen, Stephen Hawking, Hawking about, about black, black holes? Black holes. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's an American theoretical physicist. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> In uh, 1990, uh, Hawking conceded the bet and oh, said, sweet. you're right, it is a black hole. Um, Hawking so, may oh, be oh, oh, made oh, of Lego, but so he knows Hawking, how to... Hawking said, and that's, if, if that's no black hole, and Kip Thorne was like, no, that's oh, a black hole. oh snap, and he no said, you didn't. And he said, I bet you... That was you. pretty much the conversation, oh, only no, was, no, you, no didn't. you didn't. <laughs> oh, like no, you... And and, and, uh, and and I remember the. Uh, and I don't have the concede. debt. Uh, I don't have uh, the full details on the de- on this bet, on, on but I bet? believe this is the bet that I, I heard uh, Hawking talk about on, on a TV show. I saw him on. T- was it Futurama? No, because <laughs> he was a guest on Futurama. He uh, was. He was also a guest on The Simpsons, wasn't he? Uh, I think so. The one yeah. where Lisa becomes a mess. Uh, he was also a guest on Star Trek: The Next Generation. Right, but did he actually do the voice oh, yeah. on <laughs> in the he holodeck? He, he played <laughs> poker with Data in the holodeck. <laughs> But anyway, uh, if if I'm re- recalling correctly, uh, the terms of this bet was that the loser had to buy the winner a subscription to Penthouse Magazine. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know if it's this bet exactly, but I do know for sure that Stephen Hawking did have a bet with that as one oh. of the terms, and it was over something uh, scientific. I'm pretty sure. So, it was so this now, one. for a fact, we know that Stephen Hawking has a subscription to Penthouse Magazine. Stephen Hawking is apparently a horn dog. Um, imagine being a horn dog and being in his physical condition. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. Moving on. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's, he's not expected to, he can just lie I mean they, she's not going to expect him to do anything but lie there and, and enjoy it like come Should on we, uh, uh, this is a perfect segue into accretion discs don't you think um, absolutely I can't it think is. of a better segue into accretion discs that's right Stephen Hawking getting it on and accretion discs are completely related so what is an accretion disc I in spite of all my research I do not know the answer to that question and I'm now proving to be, again, the least knowledgeable. Well, of course, uh, a black hole, much like uh, any kind of gravity source, a star, etc., while it does have the event horizon where nothing can escape its pull, further out, because of, again, the inverse square law, uh, the gravitational pull is not so great, so it is possible for things to enter into orbit around them. Like a big Uh, swirly ice cream? Yes, like a big swirly ice cream. Ah. Or like, uh, like, as a matter of fact, uh, our galaxy around the supermassive black holes at the center. Right. Uh, Like our solar system with our sun. Wait a minute, there's supermassive black holes at the center of our galaxy? There are supermassive black holes at the center of all galaxies. Is that a technical term, supermassive? Yes, it is, Yes, it actually is. Here, wait, I, can wait, tell wait. You, I can tell you the difference. Seriously? That's a, an actual technical term yeah. they a, came up with. A stellar... The greatest minds, the greatest supermassive. physicist minds in the world had to come up with a technical term, and mm-hmm. they came up with supermassive. The yep. first option was really big. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess supermassive does sound very important. The stellar uh, black hole is 10 to 100 solar masses. The supermassive is millions to billions solar masses. Well, that is definitely super, super and, massive and massive together. That's right. You mixed is it your super with my is it So it anyway, accretion disk. No, I think it's one word. Uh, going back, wow. the accretion disk is the is matter that is further out from the uh, event horizon that has uh, entered into orbit around the black hole. So it's it's the it's the stuff basically swirling in the bowl of the yeah. black hole. It's accreting. For, you might say. Uh, if it's For fast enough, reference. if it's fast enough, if it will actually enter into a relatively stable orbit, much like the planets are around our sun, uh, yep. because there are points uh, around a black hole where the gravity is pulling on it with the same uh, strength that. The sun is pulling on our planet, right? As long as you get far, far, far out enough. So. so, to use an analogy, if you've got a toilet bowl full of poo, <laughs> right, and it's all different little chunks all over, and you press the, the flushy button, that creates they'll all hole. start. They'll <laughs> that creates the black hole. That then it becomes a swirl, mm-hmm. and all the, and that that all the poo would be the accretion. Accretion disk oh, and no, any poo around that the go center down. of the No, all the poo that goes down is in the event horizon, and any poo that doesn't was in the accretion disk. <laughs> <laughs> is totally. that, that's what we're saying? Sure. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure you chose the proper analogy. Actually, I think a better example would be if you've ever seen those uh, the uh, examples they've given of how gravity works 
where uh, it's like a uh, plane, a web. A, a, yeah, kind of a plane that uh, that that dips into the middle and then yeah. eventually goes straight yeah. down. Yeah. Um, but but it gets it's a, a much smoother and and slighter plane on the outer edges. I'm describing this terribly. I'm used, trying to use my hands. But what you I, could take you could take way, a marble yeah. if it's if it's round, right? You could take a marble and then like uh, much like on a roulette wheel, give it a speed. And as long as you're out on an edge and give it a certain speed, it will just kind of move around and roll around this circle and maybe very slowly move towards the center, right? So as long as you have a certain amount of speed going across the uh, gravitational pull, perpendicular to the uh, gravitational pull, you'll be able to enter orbit. Uh, and this all depends on your speed and how far away you are, and which also determines the gravitational pull. And then, and that's what our planet, the planet that we're on, is doing. It's going a certain speed uh, perpendicular to the sun, and the sun is pulling it in, and that creates the rotational. Uh, God, it's so boring. I'll got. tell you, uh, as I far as analogies go, <laughs> as far as analogies go, the black hole being a roulette wheel is certainly less distasteful than, than the, a poo-filled, than the poo-filled, bowl, poo-filled toilet. toilet bowl. But it's a roulette wheel that drops down into straight down in the middle, right? right. And that straight down is the event horizon, where, where you cannot possibly spin a marble around fast enough that it won't just go straight. This down. is a roulette wheel on which there is no winner. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Always bet on black hole. <laughs> Let's move uh, on from that. So jets, another another uh, feature ooh, ooh, jets, ooh, of jet a black planes? hole. Like a no, like okay. a jet of matter. A jet like of uh, matter. Uh, jets form in black holes that have an accretion disk funneled into a uh, into a disk shaped. Torus. Are you familiar with that word? Yeah, I, I'm. Torus is like the, a donut. I'm a familiar with the uh, zodiac sign. That's <laughs> spelled differently. Yeah, T O R U S. And by the spin and the magnetic field and the very narrow regions over the black hole's poles, matter can be energized to extremely high temperatures and speeds, escaping the black hole in the form of high-speed jets. Did you just say the hole's poles? So, yeah, the hole's poles. I did say the hole's poles. So let me draw this out. Doesn't it look like that, everyone? Yep. Okay, that's Note jet. figure B on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Appendix C. So it's like you got your, you got your plate... And then in the center of the plate, two streams are coming out at the very at the very middle point. Yeah, but oh, hold on a sec. I'm confused so you, here. You, you so have a black hole. You've got a donut around it in a like a, a, a sort of you know donut shaped disc. Yeah. And then, okay. and then the top and bottom of, of uh, where the donut is not through the donut right? hole. Through the donut hole. Uh, if, I was a, if I was a now, bike mechanic, like, now, I'd hold on. Is, this. is the donut hole the black hole? No, the donut, the, the donut hole, the center of the donut hole is a black hole. Yeah, the, donut the donut is, is the accretion, accretion disc, disc. And then the jets are shooting out the top and the bottom. In the middle. Of, of so the like when, the, you, when you bite into a donut, the cream filling that will yes, shoot out yes, to the side. Yes, perfect. And oh, also wow. poo in a toilet. Wow, there's <laughs> another a donut analogy. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and after <laughs> so it's digesting a, wait, wait, So donut, if, I'm, if I get this correctly, it's a poo donut. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking tonight's episode of wow. Caustic Soda Poo Donuts. Wow. <laughs> Maybe a mixed metaphor. I can't wait to get to the pop culture section. <laughs> did this, not, did this not necessarily episode. need to go there. Well, you know, we're actually uh, we're ru- running right up against our break time here. That time flew by. Dude, that's all relative. You. Oh no! It, it flew by because we weren't oh. falling into a black hole. Oh no, you didn't. Down. My readings indicate we are not in time and space as we understand it.
Welcome back to Caustic Soda, the podcast. I'm Torin. I'm Kevin. I'm Joe. We're talking about black holes and spaghettification. We just got back from our spaghettification break. And uh, we're going to talk about in the news. I read something, and it probably was, it's got to be six months to a year ago. There were a couple of astrophysicists who uh, had some pretty not good things to say about the Large Hadron Collider. Not not good in what way? It, I don't know um, if everybody's aware of the Large Hadron Collider is this machine that they or built. Or LHC. Or the LHC, if you will. Is this uh, some machine that they built in Switzerland? I think it's Switzerland. <laughs> Geneva. Geneva, there you go. Uh, uh, it's in Switzerland. They built it to replicate it's black holes, did they not? They want to get. They want to create antimatter. Nope. No. <laughs> oh, Am I totally wrong. wrong? No, no, no. Yes, you're wrong. Oh snap! Uh, they okay. want to determine if the Higgs boson actually exists. What Higgs is the Higgs boson? boson? Higgs uh, boson. That is a uh, that is a topic for another podcast. It's a, a theoretical uh, super tiny particle that they believe may be. I don't even know. But doesn't black holes figure into this somehow? Well, people were people who don't know anything about science said, but couldn't you create a black hole by doing that? <laughs> Tearing it a hole in time-space right. continuum? I thought that they were trying to create a very, very small black hole, but there was no danger from doing so. That's not what I've heard. All right, well, so suffice to so say... Suffice we to say, don't know what we're talking about. We don't about. exactly know what the yeah. Large Hadron Collider <laughs> Does is, or is, is or, or where or, it is. No, it's in Geneva. We know <laughs> oh, okay, sure. we, do know, we do know where it is. Uh, but we're not 100% sure, but for all intents and purposes, this, what, I, what I read doesn't really have anything to do with that. So uh, the Large Hadron Collider was about to run its first experiment or something, and there was a malfunction, and when they investigated the malfunction, they found that a bird had dropped a piece of bread in through, like, a coolant tube mm -hmm. to the surface, mm -hmm. and it jammed the whole thing up and did millions of dollars of damage. Mm -hmm. And there were two scientists who posited the theory that this bird traveled back from the future to sabotage right. the Large Hadron right. Collider. Uh, that's all I read about that article. That's the all time. I read in that article about this issue. But uh, I think it's fascinating that an astrophysicist... Uh, <clears throat> would think that, uh, A, time travel is possible, yeah. and B, would think that a bird would want to time travel into the past to sabotage a machine. I, I think the, the idea was uh, either God or nature itself is uh, sabotaging the LHC. So you've got scientists. Because, because nature doesn't want the Higgs boson to exist. Or nature abhors. The, the problem is, is that we, we're theorizing that the Higgs boson does exist in nature, so the creating of it shouldn't make any difference right. to nature. Yeah, I don't think anybody thinks that these guys are not cracked. Okay, so I've got the data on what the Higgs boson is. It's, it's also known as the God particle. Oh, uh, God. It's a hypothetical massive scalar elementary particle predicted to exist by the standard model in particle physics. So basically they're thinking that the, the Higgs boson is the reason why objects have mass, the reason why they are affected by gravitational pull and, and have uh, gravity. So would there be some Higgs bosons in the middle of a black hole? I would think so because the, the, there's mass there, yeah. But I, boy, that sounds like something incredibly if there complicated. Are that boasts, uh, if there are any, I think, boasts, I think what we're really coming down to, if there are any astrophysicists out there who are working on the uh, Large Hadron Collider or in any way, shape, or form affiliated listening to this podcast, feel free to drop us an email at info at causticsodapodcast.com. That's right. To explain to us what exactly the Large Hadron Collider is intended Please to do. Please set us straight. Yeah. We're hopeless. Absolutely. <laughs> No, I, I do not understand I'm, the science behind I, the Large Hadron Well, Collider. you know, I think uh, not understanding theoretical uh, edge of science physics is not something to be ashamed of. I, I think but we don't recommend the, you start a podcast the, about the, it. The problem, <laughs> don't know what you're doing. The problem really exists when people don't know about it but claim that they do, and right. then you get all sorts of quantum quackery and worries about black holes being caused by the LHC. But what we can do here on Caustic Soda is talk about Black hole. The well, movie. Well, uh, one second though. I, I, I kind of want to go back to these oh. guys. I want to go back to these guys who were talking about time travel. Let's put the put our uh, our our money where our mouth is, so to speak. Torn is time travel possible? No. Joe? I mean, yes, very slowly. <laughs> in, forward in one direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slowly forward, one well. second at a time, <laughs> taking exactly depends one second. On, depends on what you used to measure slowly when you're talking about time. It's true. I remember listening to uh, Dr. Michio Kaku talking about how time travel. They how they used. To, Theory, particle theorists and what I used to scoff the idea of time travel, but they're beginning to give it a little more credence. By the way, when you said that scientist's name, I really wanted to say Gesundheit. Uh, what about you, Joe? Time travel? Possible? I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, have, I, I love to answer these things correctly, 
<laughs> and I answered them correctly by saying, I don't know. Oh, come on. Give us a, give us a, you got to have a feeling Dude, about it. I've seen no evidence for it thus far. We'll do, uh, we'll so do a whole I, episode so I would say, on time I would travel. Say, uh, what do you I think about that? Ooh, yeah, a splinter episode, a, a, a spin-off. I think if time travel happened that or was likely, then we would know about it already because it would have happened and we'd have some evidence. There's That's no right. evidence. No, and, no, and, you know why, and you know why we, we had that uh, convention a couple of years back, which was supposed to be the one and only That's time right, the time traveler convention. convention. You, if you're a time traveler, you have to meet nobody, at that convention. But no. <laughs> nobody showed up. No, you know why we wouldn't know about it? Because all the time travelers in Marty McFly fashion would bring their almanac back with them and, and become the most powerful people in the world. Mm. And they wouldn't want anybody else to know about time travel because then they wouldn't be able to exploit the situation. But let's talk about black holes. Well, that's time travel related. Anyway, so uh, I, well, I especially think if you watch Black Hole the movie, the finale had to do with time travel. Didn't I it? sort of some kind of thing. When's black the last? Hole when's the last time you've seen that, Kevin? <laughs> I probably have not seen it since it was new. Because I saw it last year. Oh, excellent! How awesome was it? Three out of ten. Yeah, Three it's, it's really out of good. ten. Yeah, I really like the big not, red robot Max. Yeah, oh yeah, not Anthony Perkins' most stellar role. Little joke there. Uh, I uh, I owned all the toys. I owned every single black hole toy that was to be had was in my possession. I didn't even know that there were that many. I remember you could get some uh, toys out of Shreddies. Oh, that's right. I remember seeing yeah. was it Bob? Was that the yeah? You could get Bob. Could get Bob. And, uh, I remember those seeing, other robots. I can, I can no, visualize it, him on the cover of Shreddies. In fact, I I like the the boxes that the black hole figures the action figures came in that I kept them for years. Just the boxes. Just the, the boxes that I was very careful to peel the plastic <laughs> back. So that I would uh, not ruin the uh, the encasement. The black hole, 1979. I was nine years old. The crew of the spaceship Palomino stumbles across a lost ship, the USS Cygnus, hovering on the edge of an immense black hole. Once aboard, they find the ship is manned by robots. It's only a human inhabitant, one Dr. Hans Reinhardt, an eminent scientist, missing for the past 20 years. His plan? To enter the black hole. Nice. What lies beyond the black hole? Immortality or oblivion? That's the ultimate it, question, it, isn't it? In the movie or in real life? Because uh, in the movie, I, I, I think I know the re- I know the answer in real life. <laughs> <laughs> oblivion. Yeah, it's a spaghettification. I think the I think the I, the idea was uh, the crazy madman doctor thought that immortality was that the answer. May, he would maybe become one with the Higgs boson, even though we didn't even know that term yet, and he would be the god <laughs> particle. That's spurious. That's a spurious connection. Oh, I don't know. Now, from what well, I know about the yes, black hole, serious. black hole was Disney's response to the uh, popularity of Star Wars. Uh, right after Star Wars came out and made just millions and millions of dollars, and, yeah. and all the other studios couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, of course, the studio execs being the semi-retarded individuals they are, sorry, semi-mentally challenged individuals that they are, just went, oh, it must be the special effects. We'd better make a science fiction show with lots of cool special effects. Yeah. Let's do that. And they didn't care about writing stories or creating story arcs or doing anything like that. They just did as many. And, and the same thing happened with the Star Trek, the motion picture. And, yeah. uh, and in spite but of But it did have that, robots, though. In spite it of did. all that, The Black Hole, an Academy-nominated award-nominated film. For special effects? For cinema, cinematography and visual effects. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's do some special effects. What about the story? Oh, we'll knock that out over the weekend. So not yeah, not surprisingly. Just not make sure there's robots. Play. I thought it was very funny that Maximilian Schell was the name of the actor right. who played our evil villain. And uh, the name of the robot, his was, henchman, yeah, was Maximilian. Maximilian. I don't know why that uh, always... I don't know what that means. I, I don't either. I, I'd like, did they cast Maximilian Schell because of his name or because of his evil proclivities? I just like that the... The robot's weapons were like two rotating blades coming yeah. out of its elbows or something. Oh, man, yeah. the maximum attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's how Anthony Perkins was killed. A particularly not futuristic weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that was the, his cleaning device. He would use that to, <laughs> to, like, scrub the walls. And I think that uh, when Maximilian was coming at Anthony Perkins' character, Anthony Perkins held up like a book or something to protect himself. Yeah, and, oh yeah, and it went through the it book. It went right through the chest, book, and the yeah. book started spinning around. Yeah, everybody. no, I remember was that. that the book, was was the book the Bible? I hope so. Oh. <laughs> it was a radioactive Bible, in fact. <laughs> or perhaps Marie Curie's cookbook. Event Horizon, the movie from 1997. Uh, I haven't seen that one, actually. I saw it when it came out. I, uh, I saw it when I it came out. Super in gory. Isn't it super, super gory? gory? It was one of those movies where I, on, my blog, I'm on, on my blog, I put up the different kinds of horror films. And this one, different kind of classifications. This one is all just shock. Just like spookiness. Not, yeah, not, right. not spookiness, but just like, bam! 
pow, yeah. woo, woo. Kind yeah, of like, there were know, definitely a right. lot of uh, like, a lot of uh, jump moments. Yeah, exactly. A lot yeah. of bam there wasn't moments. there wasn't really any creepiness or, yeah. or well, scariness. I, to I, it. I think it was really moody. I think uh, I, I, it was very dark, and I uh, it had yeah. some cool set pieces. I remember uh, that incredible set pieces, and it's the first movie that I remember uh, where uh, one of the characters was jettisoned into space without a spacesuit and didn't pop like a water balloon. Oh. That he actually. Mm. As long as you didn't, uh, as long as you didn't accurate. like try and breathe, you'd be self-contained unit, and you could survive a spacewalk for a very limited amount of time. Right, right. That was the uh, or uh, space <laughs> float, is the case maybe. That, exactly. So that was the, and I think that that's backed up by hard science, is it not? Yeah, more or less. You, so, don't, you don't explode. Sort of. Yeah. Actually, from what I've heard, you don't want to hold your breath. You want to get rid of it all. Because you want to keep the pressure differential between yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. Uh, inside and the okay, so per- space. perhaps just a smidge off. But it is the first movie that I recall mm-hmm. them actually pausing the fact that you will not. And you had seen like Outland like the day before. <laughs> well, I hadn't seen the day before, but <laughs> okay. certainly I had seen in film and television. I'd seen everybody pop like right. water balloons in the past, and so I, I kind of really I felt like a hard science movie with some like creepy supernatural demon esque kind of uh, undercurrent. I really enjoyed it. How about you, Torn? What did you think? I didn't like it. Uh, well, just straight out, I did not I did, like did it. Not, didn't care for it. Is there any one thing in particular? No, you didn't it was care all for? around generally bad. But you're a sci- you're a hard science guy. How come you didn't like the fact that they seem to couch the whole thing in this? Kevin, if I want to watch a science thing. documentary, I'll watch <laughs> a science documentary. You're just enraged that I, I was you know the star. I didn't I didn't pick apart the new Star Trek because they used red matter. <laughs> I actually love that they use red matter because they didn't bother explaining what it was. Yeah. They were just like, here's our thing that does the thing we needed to that do. It makes black holes. It makes black holes, yeah. It's, what is it? It's red matter. What does red matter do? Uh, come on, we're, we're getting on with the story. How about uh, one torn? I know that you have a personal connection with a mock film soundtrack. Spaceship featuring, Zero? Featuring time travel and black holes. Yes, it's in fact, the time Spaceship Zero, which is uh, an album by the Darkest of the Hillside Thickets, Spaceship Zero, the original motion picture soundtrack and also a role-playing game written by myself and Warren, our guitarist, and some other fine folks. Including my lovely wife helping you out. That's right. And uh, Spaceship Zero uh, is testing out the better-than-light drive, the BTL drive. So wait, so hold on a sec. This is the story behind this the is the story. Spaceship yeah, Zero's yeah, yeah. mythos. Yeah, this, the idea of Spaceship Zero is that there's a crew on this, new, this spaceship that's testing out this new drive. The drive creates a singularity in front of the ship, and the singularity pulls the ship along. And spits it out on a white hole. Not exactly, but the, uh, uh, what happens in the story is, uh, from the crew's perspective, the, uni- well, the universe does blow up in a way. Okay. <laughs> the universe, actually more correctly, the universe collapses around the ship, around the black hole. Oh, okay. So it didn't, to, to, not, to, doesn't turn out as intended. No. Unintended consequences, yeah, if you will. Yeah, so they, they create a black hole, wherever, just on the, uh, the edge of Pluto or whatever. The universe, to them, an instant. Can in just an instant, the entire universe collapses in the way that it normally would. Is there a donut analogy or, that or we the can way that it here? possibly would? The way that it possibly we're, would. We're not exactly sure if it's going to keep true. getting bigger or if it's going to reach stability. Or so then they create on. the second. They basically, essentially, from their perspective, create a second Big Bang. Okay. And they have to wait 13 billion years for the Earth to, re- to reappear, re-evolve, <laughs> according to. Uh, uh, what's the theory? Bendall's theory or something like that. Uh, <laughs> no wonder I'm the least knowledgeable person on the black hole subject matter. Well, well Bendall is a, is a character from... It's not a real theory. Oh, it's not no, a real no, no, theory. One of the, no. one of the characters, it's a completely invented theory. One, of, one awesome. of the characters has a theory that if they let time keep going super fast, that uh, the universe will reform and another Earth will arise. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. so, that, so indeed, that is what happens. They go to the second Earth, but, uh, the second Earth, but in this... Parallel universe, so to speak. It's not really parallel, but second. It's the second <laughs> it's a, universe. The second it's coming the second of the universe. universe. It's parallel. It's more linear. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> one after the, the other. Linear in the next uh, universe B. Let's call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Earth is there. It's just been taken over by uh, evil Lovecraftian uh, frog aliens. Oh, there in you space go. Spacesuits called hydronauts. I had. Uh, and you can read all about that in Space Jam Zero, the uh, the role playing game on the CD. Is there a website or anything like that that people can reference? There is SpaceshipZero.com, but it doesn't have anything on it right now. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. I know. Right. It's ours. It's there. Torn has access. But if you go to Thickets.net, you can get the album. If you go to GreenRonin.com, you can get the role-playing game. Is it Ronin or Ronin? Uh, Ronin is how they pronounce it, so that's how I choose to pronounce oh, okay. it. Right, but it's spelled Green Ronin. R-O-N-I-N. But I think in Japanese it would just be Ronin. Ronin. Yeah. Ronin. 
uh, actually, the Millennium Falcon is the ship that made the Kessel Run in, in less, than less than 12, 12 parsecs. parsecs. And the problem is a parsec is a unit of measurement, not right. a unit of speed. Yeah. So a bunch of fans have decided that that means that the Kessel Run goes past a black hole. Oh. So the shorter the run you make, the closer to the black hole you get. Oh, I see. Uh, meaning that it was fast enough to escape the pull of the black hole to make this run in only 12 wow. parsecs. This is what a bunch of nerds. super nerd <laughs> <laughs> territory. I like the Star the Star Wars movies just as much as the next guy, but that's You didn't worry about the Kessel Run? Nerd. And you I probably didn't even care about SETI Alpha 5 and SETI Alpha 6 in Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan. Yeah, except for the fact that uh, it shouldn't. They, they, when they mistook one for the other, yeah. it should have been the opposite number. Yeah, exactly. so you did care about it then. I didn't care about I cared it until about somebody pointed that out to me. <laughs> that, was, that was me. I it yeah, was that in one of our previous this episodes. This is set for five. Yeah, did we talk, I can't remember if we talked about that on the air or not. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. But it was ridiculous. It's so long ago. Lost so in. so black, hell, black holes. Not to be messed with. No. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if anybody would like to get a, a book that's about how dangerous black holes are and a whole bunch of the other stuff that's in the universe, uh, I can very highly recommend Death from the Skies. Oh, by Dr. Phil by Plate. By Dr. Phil Plate. Uh, I'm only about the halfway through it astronomer. myself. The Bad Astronomer. Have you ever been Why? to badastronomy.com? Why is he a bad astronomer? Uh, he had a blog called Bad Astronomy. Okay. And I believe it's because he started off making notations about people who had yeah who had who did who did the math wrong they and did had, the math had wrong. incorrect oh, ideas he was, about he how punking, he was punking yeah. astronomers yeah, kinda, yeah. he was calling but, them out uh, on his blog yeah. but but his wow, book uh, so Death in the a, Skies is these are the ways the universe wants to kill you he's an and, astronomy uh, gangster yeah he's great and he's great and he's on a lot of podcasts and boy would I love to have him on ours that would be so hey, I would, he's the, so such maybe a good one day we could hook up on a Skype thing how about the the classic Stanley Kubrick Film 2001. Did he go through a black hole at the end of that? Like, uh, is that uh, no? That was, that, was the, that was the black monolith. monolith. That was the that was the monolith. That was oh, monolith. Yeah. But you know, it. Uh, oh God, it's did, full what of do you think? You think it's uh, yeah, it's full of stars. Like, is that a black hole? Um, is that a black hole related? It, it was never said. I mean, it could yeah. be, but it was never stated that it was. It, it, it's some kind of futuristic uh, technology. That certainly, the, uh, that like weirdo, wavy, uh, you know, multicolor flying yeah. past you, LSD kind of mm-hmm. uh, psychedelic moment. That could feels have, that like, feels like spaghettification. That feels very much like spaghettification. Although he was he was fine. <laughs> yeah, well, this he didn't is, get spaghettified. That Co- was just no, Kubrick is all, obviously coming out on the on the side uh, that you can be spit out a white hole and survive. I I, I think it was just magic. In the uh, space magic, space magic. It was. It was written by um, 2001 by uh, yeah. Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke. And uh, wasn't it Arthur C. Clarke who said that uh, sufficiently advanced technology would seem like magic? And isn't it now 2010, the year That's we made right. contact? It is. I really like that movie too. I, I know a lot of people didn't. Uh, no black I like it. Space Baby. I can't get past Space Baby. What can I tell you? <laughs> really? Because space, space, space Baby was baby. in 2001. Yeah, we're talking yeah, about 2010 now. Yeah, no, no, but it starts with Space Baby in 2010, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Space Baby remember. and he visits yeah, Earth. The Space Baby is like the first two seconds of well, the movie, yeah. and I can't get past it. But it was the end of 2001. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's, a, see, here's it's the, the difference. bridge. Space Baby you, is the bridge. You put you put Space Baby at the end of a movie, and you kind of forget it. It's like, sure, it's the last thing you see, but that movie was so mind-blowing up to that point in time that I'm not remembering Space Baby. I remember Hal and the whole... You know, that creepy voice, mm-hmm. what are you doing, Hal, don't do this, what are you doing, Dave, don't do this, blah, That's blah, That's a good blah. impression. Great scene, love it, thank you very much. And I forget about Space Baby. But when you open a movie, two seconds in Space Baby, I can't get past it. I, I, I don't think I've ever well, watched the whole film. here's the thing about Space Baby. I'll remember that about you. You'll notice that, <laughs> you'll notice that he was also very old, and he was also, his, reg- his uh, age he was when he was the astronaut uh, on board the Endeavor. What's happening is he has been pulled outside of time yeah. and is existing outside of time along all of his own lifetimes. So when he visits his wife, he's... He gets there and he's space baby and then he's middle aged and then he's old and then he's not. And I think Arthur C. Clarke was experimenting with oh, yeah. uh, some sort of psychedelic space material. Babies? When, yes, with licking space babies make you <laughs> write crazy books. <laughs> oh my god, we're so off topic. I think what we found out is that there's really not enough pop culture about To black make a hole. good podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think there's there's not enough talented people. There's to make certainly a good there's certainly enough uh, there's certainly bad not. Disney movies to do a podcast about black holes, but hard science by soft people, not so much. <laughs> it's just because oh, so much hard yeah. science by soft people. Uh, well, thanks a lot, folks, for coming along for the ride. I'm Kevin Leeson. I'm Joe Fulgham, and I'm Torn Atkinson. Come and visit us at causticsodapodcast.com for many delicious features. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye.